if you're looking to dominate the battlefield as an infantry main player in rise of kingdoms then this is the video for you today we're going to go over everything you need to know we're going to go over the best civilization to pick for infantry we're going to go over the best order with which you should be investing in legendary commanders and we're going to go over the progression of your equipment here as an infantry main player but first what's going on guys cheers now this has got to be one of my most requested guides for rise of kingdoms primarily because it has been since august of 20 2021 that I have made a guide exclusively for infantry players especially those of you that are new or free to play and the reason that it's been two years since I've made a video like this is because it's been about two years since infantry were actually somewhat meta viable the truth is if you're going to be an infantry main and by that I mean focusing on building three infantry armies in the late game with one cavalry and one archer march supporting it then you are playing the game on hard mode and if you're watching this video today I'm gonna just start right up front and say if you're a new player or free to play player and you want to be an infantry main for whatever reason do not do it straight up just don't do it okay don't do it it is playing the game on hard mode it is literally the hardest thing to do in the end game because there is the least talented amount of commanders to choose from there's a very small pool of meta viable commanders here now this could change in the coming months if and when the next infantry commanders come into the game potentially they're going to be very good but historically speaking we haven't really seen a super dominant infantry meta in the open field which is what 99 percent of you watching are going to be so heed my warning I'm telling you right now you don't want to be an infantry main that's just the facts okay but I also recognize that a lot of you want this video so I am going to proceed with the best information that I can give you if you want to play the game on hard mode if you want to be an infantry main then this this video is for you this is what this is what you should be doing even though you should not be doing this and look if you guys are curious then maybe I can make a follow-up video as to why infantry are so bad and maybe what Lilith can do about it if they are interested in fixing the balance in the open field up until my most recent video I was considering myself an infantry main but I've been playing the game for years so I've had a long time to literally max out a bunch of different commanders and have a ton of different things to do and even I have moved on from being an infantry main so if you want that video covering everything as to why infantry is bad I can go ahead and do that but with that disclaimer out of the way let's jump into the infantry guide for free to play new players okay the first thing that we have to talk about is your civilization what is the best civilization to pick as an infantry main player well for a majority of your playtime, if you are not in kvk you should be playing as Germany and I know that that sounds counterintuitive because this has cavalry stats but really you want the 10 percent action point recovery okay that is the number one best thing that you can have as a free-to-play player especially in the early game and if you're outside of kvk you need this for events you need this for chaining barbarians it's just sort of non-negotiable as far as I'm concerned so this is mainly what you're going to be playing as if you are open fielding you're fighting in kvk and you are running a an infantry heavy lineup meaning you have a majority of infantry commanders then France is going to be the best choice for you especially if you are VIP 14 and lower because the hospital healing speed is going to save you a lot of resources when fighting in the open fields and the troop health here is really nice this is not infantry specific you can actually get a benefit from this for every troop type which is very nice it's a little bit flexible and also the throwing axeman unit has the highest base health in the entire game which means they are very good for being tanky out in the world as an infantry player a couple of other options that you could pick well really I guess kind of only one other option uh and that's Ottoman and that's like if you are a late 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 game and you have like five armies somehow as a free-to-play player and you have multiple different troop types and all of them then maybe you can go for the five percent skill damage here uh and the extra march speed is very nice because infantry are very slow that is pretty much the only three civilizations that are on the table here for infantry and it's funny that only one of them is actually infantry now with that out of the way let's jump into the commander investment order now once again this is playing the game on hard mode and one thing that i want to just say right up front okay is that if you are a brand new player to rise of kingdoms and you're a free-to-play player to rise of kingdoms then getting your hands on legendary commander sculptures 
is going to be somewhat of a bottleneck for the amount of commanders that you can expertise or at least invest in their skills okay and because this is a bottleneck you want to use the universal legendary commander sculptures as wisely as you possibly can which means you not only have to worry about how good is the commander you're investing in but you also have to worry about the opportunity cost of that investment for example if i put more legendary commander sculptures into Tarek, those are universal sculptures that i cannot invest in another commander for example i'm waiting for hua shibing to come into the game and i want to expertise him eventually so sculptures that i use for Tarek are sculptures that i can't use for hua and that is how you have to look at every investment that you're making in the game so the technical best choice this is like technically the best thing that you can do in terms of making the best possible investments is literally do not invest in any legendary commanders until kvk3 and beyond okay the reason for that is because that's when you get access to and you could see up top here that's when you get access to the best commanders in the game and one universal legendary commander sculpture is you it's universal it's one sculpture into caesar could have been one sculpture into cpo so your best bet is to save everything till kvk3 now realistically is that possible i don't think so unless you are insane or you're looking for a challenge or you're just starting over with a jumper project to see how good of an account you can actually build okay if you're a brand new player i don't think that that is a reasonable expectation to have because the first time you're going to enter season three of kvk is between like 245 and 270 days after your kingdom is open so that's like eight months okay so literally you would just not be playing the game basically for eight months like you would just be leveling up your city no fighting or anything like that or you'd be open field fighting for the first one or two kvks with um your your epic commanders right and then once you enter kvk3 and beyond like i mean you're just gonna get stomped right you can't use epic commanders that far into the game so that is technically the best choice but I'm going to proceed in this video as if you're not going to do that because 99.9% .9 of you are not going to play a game for eight months just to start playing the game. Then it just makes no sense. So don't, so listen, if you're going to, if you're a veteran to this game and you're going to comment down below, oh, actually Omni Arc, you shouldn't invest in any of the early game commanders because they're technically not, I, I, I know. I know but like you got to look at it from a new player's point of view okay so if you're still here and you're still interested in being an infantry main then i am going to assume that you are ready to be a hardcore player you're playing on hard mode remember and that means that you want to spend down all of your action points as much as possible and the reason that is relevant is because we have to talk about the investment order for these commanders now of course it wouldn't be an omni arc video if we didn't break out the tier maker and this is how we're going to organize the different pairs that you're going to be building for open field fighting okay uh like i mentioned before like the first pair that you're going to be using pretty much is going to be sun Tzu with bjorn this is basically one of the best uh, open field pairs for epic commanders in the game um but realistically you're not going to get a ton of value out of this far into the game because the, you just can't use epics okay so if you're wondering what's the epic pair to use this is the best epic pair to use for infantry players uh i don't think really anybody doubts that realistically you would probably do bjorn primary that way you can get the debuff aoe on his active skill before you hit them with sun Tzu's active skill so just keep that in mind they also both have the skill tree so you're really not missing out on anything by doing this and if anything the conquering tree is better because you have buckler shield for open field fighting with this out of the way though uh, i'm just gonna move this down here because like that's not relevant for a majority of you for most most fighting the first investment that you should be making as a very active free-to-play player playing on hard mode is going to be richard the first and you only want to invest into his first skill to five the reason for this is because his first skill is what gives you a bunch of healing factor and a massive debuff to the target that causes them to deal 30 percent less damage and less march speed for two seconds small debuff but it is aoe which is nice and then at a single point in the rest of his skills uh you're pretty much going to be able to do what you want with him you get a little bit of damage taken reduction a little bit of counter attack bonus you get 10 percent of infantry stats this last one just enhances your healing effect a little bit and the only reason that you are getting richard with the first skill to five so five one 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 is because you're going to be using him to kill barbarians out in the world i have 190 million barbarian kills uh with my boy richard here okay that's mainly what you're going to 
going to be using him for you're not really going to be pvping with him i pretty much never see this okay the only time you see richard pvp is when you are a kraken in kvk1 you just expertise richard and martel and then nobody can kill you and it's it's lit okay that's the only time Richard is PVP friendly. Okay. And that's 99.999% of you are not going to fall into that bucket. So just take the idea of using Richard in PVP and pretty much just throw it out the window. Okay. 5111 is like 50 sculptures. You can get him from the wheel of fortune. And once you do that, you're done. Leave him on the bench. You're going to get value out of him, not only from chaining barbarians, but also from using him in things like uh, sunset Canyon, using him in golden kingdom, other events where you need just a general tank. You'll find that he can be pretty useful as a tank here as well. So you'll get a lot of value out of just a 50 sculpture investment. And I think in the long run, you're going to be happy that you spent those 50 sculptures. What is the next? thing that you should invest in and that is in my opinion probably YSG now, I know that sounds crazy and we're talking about infantry mains right but hear me out is YSG replaced in the late game by Zhuge Liang pretty much yeah I mean Zhuge Liang is just better in every single way but remember you're playing the game on hard mode which means you are going to be grinding the first eight months until you land into KVK3 and the best thing to do is have a YSG expertise with circular aoe there's a bunch of reasons to love ysg still i hate the idea that he's useless now he's he's literally not useless and we're going to have good use for him moving forward and i will explain just please trust me on this one i do still think that expertise in ysg as a hardcore free-to-play player is the way to go if you are a casual free-to-play player then this entire video does not apply to you you should not be doing anything in this video okay but yes i would say you probably want to skip ysg potentially in the early game as a casual free-to-play player that you could easily make the argument that that would be the case so this is what you're going to be focusing on in the early game remember an expertise legendary takes 690 commander sculptures to get him there and 10 sculptures to summon him and so this might take you a while okay this might take you a couple of months to do this and then after this you you pretty much should just save your sculptures until kvk3 okay which means that kvk1 you're going to be fighting with uh you know epic commanders in the open fields kvk2 I mean look you can try to fight with with these commanders uh I mean I don't know how great of an experience you're going to have uh and then the question becomes like okay well what about Alexander the Great right like what about him uh he's not I mean even for infantry mains like I I just he's not he's not there is such a small window of time where he's going to be valuable to you even in like even as an infantry main it's not going to be a thing right so uh, I just can't I just can't do it I can't I can't tell you to invest in Alexander he, he's just not putting out the damage yes he's supportive and he's got march speed it's nice but like good good luck telling your kingdom like oh sorry I didn't meet your kill quota for this KVK Okay, I was being supportive with my Alexander the Great like sure some kingdoms will let you get away with that but Alex is just not packing the punch he's not tanky enough to really justify even using him in the late game right so there's just there's just I'm I just can't I can't recommend it I'm sorry I know the Alexander stands are are on fire in the comments right now I hear you I get it but like you have to think about how few commanders you can invest in as a free-to-play player Alex is just it's not one of them he's just not and that literally brings us up to kvk3 i mean like the, i told you this is hard mode okay you've got no good options uh until kvk3 and that's when you expertise cpo you just straight you go in you spin the wheel as much as you can and you expertise cpo and then the first thing that you do is you run cpo with ysg okay and listen this was a commander pairing that i actually messed around with right when cpo first came out i thought like okay well circular aoe here is insane 50 percent skill damage for cpo would be insane this is basically back in the day people used to run alexander the great primary with ysg secondary uh this is basically that pairing but on steroids because cpo prime is just so much better than alexander the great so that's basically this pair now is this a meta army N no it's clear clearly not right this is clearly not a meta army but you can pull down a lot of kills with this army and yes it is relatively fragile and you're basically just going to be hoping that nobody 
targets you right that's, that's pretty much the best that you can do here when you first enter kvk3 the synergy here is a lot better than you might think i mean everybody knows ysg when he's expertise is basically just an aoe glass cannon that's that's what he is he deals an insane amount of circular aoe damage with a 50 percent skill damage bonus and he has a rage engine here as well and that's all that he's really doing if you throw him in an army that isn't archers okay and when we look at CPO, he pretty much does everything else. He has a massive and very important debuff here. He also has a really nice skill damage factor that gets buffed by 50% with YSG. And remember, when the enemy has this 30% health debuff is when you're going to hit them with YSG, okay? So you're really going to be dealing a lot of skill damage with this army. You have a lot of attack. You have some March speed, a little bit of health, some bonus damage factor and shielding. And when this is expertise, you actually have 60% skill damage, brother. So it's a much better army than you think. And I do recommend grabbing the relic for YSG. You can double relic this. It bumps the skill damage up another 5%. So totally you'll have 65% bonus skill damage. It's really, really nice. And then eventually you're going to be using YSG in your archer army. And this relic will become even more valuable because then the defense will actually do something. Okay. After you've expertise your CPO prime, what's the next play? Okay. Well, I think that depends on a couple of things. I like Sargon a lot. And the fact that you can run Sargon at five, 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 zero makes him a really good budget build. The only downside to five, 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 zero is that he has to be a secondary because you can't bring him to max level. So in that instance, you'd be forced to run CPO primary with Sargon secondary. Is that optimal? Not really. You would much rather have the skill tree on Sargon as the primary, because then you're going to be dealing more skill damage with both of them. And I think that's ultimately the way you want to go now if you want to be an infantry purist then you can expertise sargon that's that's it i don't recommend that again i've probably given you a million warnings in this video so hopefully you get it by now but if you don't and you want to be an infantry purist then exp expertise sargon okay uh if you don't and you just want to build the best infantry focused account that you can uh, I would say get Sargon, get him to either 5551 as a primary or 5550 as a secondary, and then use the rest of your sculptures that you're saving by not expertising him and invest that in Zhuge Liang. And boom, now you have two armies. Both of them are open field, good to go. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Zhuge Liang with YSG is, uh, it's a little bit, it's, you know, like I much rather Boudicca prime be the primary with Zhuge Liang secondary. Okay. Um, this army is double AOE insanity. It's a little bit slow. Neither of them have March speed. So you may need to use the flag accessory. You may need to use any way that you can get March speed would be great here. Okay. But you, you don't really have another choice basically, right? You have the choice between do you get Boudicca or do you get Zhuge Liang first? And it's like, I think Zhuge Liang is the better commander. Not that there's anything wrong with Boudicca. I think she's insanely good. The debuff on her active skill is one of the debuffs and it's one of the best debuffs in the entire game, right? Nobody's even denying that. So Boudicca prime is insane, but it's like, if you have a gun to my head and you tell me pick between the two, like you're going to just deal more damage with Zhuge Liang. Like there's, there's no question there. Right? So that's, that's really the, the route that you have to go. So Zhuge Liang, you could bring him to five, 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 one. Uh, eventually you're going to expertise him. But again, with the amount of sculptures you're saving by not expertising Sargon, you could get him to like five, five, three one or five five four one something like that and so you know you'll basically get two for one there if you are willing to you know not expertise sargon basically and now you've got two open field marches that are kind of popping off i'm gonna move richard down here because i don't want you guys to get confused he's not a pvp commander all right now the other thing that you could do here okay and hear me out is instead of investing in sargon at all you could expertise Zhuge Liang, if and only if you've gotten really lucky with either your Mehmed, Martel, or your Pyrus. Okay. And by that, I mean uh, for these two, at least 5511, at least, right? And we're, we're again, we're talking about when you first enter kvk3 you're going to be about eight months into the game so how many sculptures of these guys are you really going to get in eight months could you have a 5511 possibly right it may be less likely now that you have pyrus in in the game but if you've gotten really lucky and you've gotten a lot of gold keys you may have a 5511 of either of these uh, and i honestly think that the med secondary to cpo prime 
at 5511 with his relic is very good okay double relic on the med is insane 30 percent health and 10 percent skill damage really really good for cpo prime just a chef's kiss basically he's missing march speed which sucks but you know at the end of the day like this is it's great damage output for a literal free commander so this is a, a really good route that you could go the other thing that is worth mentioning as well um obviously martel like i said 5511 martel with the double relic here is great you're getting a ton of extra stats for your cpo and making him a little bit tankier a little bit harder to take down giving him a little bit of counter attack damage on that fourth skill at one right uh just overall 30 percent bonus damage on the active skill with the shield with martel great stuff there some nice synergy with cpo uh and also uh, we got to talk a little bit about ethel flood because you technically could run cpo prime primary with ethel flood expertise secondary with the double relic here as well um the march speed is greatly appreciated by your cpo prime and a nice little solid attack bonus and then cpo can do the rest of the work you're getting a really powerful debuff from ethel flood you're going to be dealing a lot of damage to these slowed targets which you probably will go all in on the uh, infantry tree if you're running cpo prime primary which means you're going to have a built-in slowdown on snare of thorns which is really nice so that pairs really nice with the bonus damage on the expertise here for ethel flood and also it makes your cpo prime a little bit more tanky by taking some less counter attack damage it's not much but it's not Nice. and again really you're here for the debuff and the aoe and also like i mentioned pyrus at 5511 could be a potential secondary to your cpo prime primary he's got an okay single target damage factor with a nice normal attack damage bonus and another no nice normal attack damage bonus when outside of alliance territory here you get some march speed which you really really want for your cpo prime as well and a little bit of health 10% attack, a very small shield and less skill damage taken. This will only get better over time as you open more gold keys. And look, let's just do an experiment right here in this video. I have 455 gold keys saved up. So let's open all of them and see how many sculptures will you actually get theoretically of Martel, of Mehmed, of Pyrus. And that should give you a good idea as to how long it's going to take to get them to 5511 for you. So let's go ahead and do it in three, two, one okay wait three two one all right so we got a bunch of food and wood okay which is nice we got 147 hours of universal speed ups which is great we got more universals than the other two combined which is really really nice we got 79 gold stars we got eight of the bundle of dazzling starlight and eight of the blessed dazzling starlight so that's pretty good here we could see we got 26 pericles sculptures so pretty low drop right there we got a full summon of pericles three of amata uh we got one of queen tamar we got one of bjorn we got two of matilda six osmond four bybars belisarius and there's that okay here we got seven pyrus sculptures okay off to a terrible start you can't even put a single skill on him for that uh let's see what we get here we got 12 Thutmose, 13 Ragnar. We got five Mulan. We got five Mehmed. Really disappointing stuff there. 11 Ishida, 54 Sunduk. Horrible drop rates here. We have 20 Cleopatra, 17 El Cid, 14 Martel, 20 Cao Cao, 13 Frederick, and only two Caesar. We got two full summons of Thutmose, one full summon of Ragnar, one of Mulan, one of Mehmed, one of Ashida, three of Sunduk. We got one of Cleopatra, one of El Cid, three of Charles Martel. Really lucky there. Really lucky. Okay. So 44 sculptures of Martel out of 455 gold keys. One Cao Cao, one Frederick, one Caesar. Literally no full summons of uh Pyrus. We got a single full summon of Mehmed and five of his sculptures. So only 15 Mehmed sculptures. Okay. So yeah. 455 gold keys the drop rates here not great okay so that's what I mean like this part of the video really depends on how lucky do you get here do you have the 5511 Martel do you have the 5511 Pyrus it's gonna be uh up to chance up to RNG Ooh, we're gonna expertise Julius Caesar in a guide video oh my goodness baby let's go oh my god that is insane we finally expertised julius caesar that literally changes nothing i will still never use him yeah that's really depressing to be honest with you really depressing i'm sorry i have to turn my air conditioner on it's super hot in new york right now okay so at this point you're either using a budget build with some free commanders that you got your hands on or you invested in the sargon either at 5550 or 
or maybe 5551 or expertise whatever you decide to do you could also do some sort of a hybrid here where you invest in Sargon and pair him with somebody like Mehmed and then you do something like this or something like this with the 5511 here right that's another route that you could go but eventually you do want to get Zhu Liang so that way you can pair him with your YSG then you are at another crossroads what do you invest in now well you have a couple of different options I would recommend just waiting until the next infantry cycle okay in the next couple of months we will probably get a new infantry legendary commander or set of commanders and hopefully one of them will be a giga chad overpowered cpo prime prime because that is the only thing that will somewhat redeem infantry in the open field if the developers don't do that infantry will be dead for at least another year which is super depressing and i hope that they know that the the weight of infantry as a troop type is riding on the shoulders of their next release it has to be a jugaliong style command like it, it has to be op otherwise it's gg for infantry so i would recommend waiting but if you're okay with branching out until then uh you can go for the nevsky with joan now what i would recommend is attempting to get your Joan at 5115 that is super cheap but it's really hard the odds are against you for sure if you don't think that's possible you could do 5515 you could try to get your hands on that and I think that that would be generally a good strategy you don't really need to expertise Joan of Arc as a free-to-play player especially because you you want to invest you want both you want to get your hands on both of these right so you could do like a 5551 five, five, Nevsky 5115 one, Joan and then finish off your Nevsky finish off your Joan whatever you want to do you may even just not finish off your Joan depending on how easily you can get that fourth skill to five but it is what it is eventually you'll want to expertise your Nevsky as well uh and there you go okay so while you're waiting for the next infantry to be overpowered this is something that you can work on and just build it in the cheapest way that you see fit that makes sense for your account if you hate the idea of branching off to into better commanders for whatever reason and you're really taking that hardcore hard mode to heart then you could go for guan okay ah god dude guan all right so here's the thing about guan he's a great commander uh but he's a bit old and eventually he will probably get a relic but for whatever reason lilith is just not releasing the relics for season two like brother in christ we need them we needed them months ago we needed them so long ago that they're already irrelevant right that that is how long ago we needed them so i don't even want to entertain the idea of a guan yu relic because we're probably at least a year away from that right if not more so that's that's that unless they surprise me with something insane with the relic and museum system okay but if you are an infantry purist and you want to go for guan then you can go for Guan instead of going for cavalry. And at that point, you would do Guan Sargon with CPO Mehmed or CPO Martel or CPO whatever, and, and you would do that. Okay. That's really all you can do. Um, Guan Yu should stay at 5155. That's the best value you can get out of Guan Yu. There's no reason to expertise him anymore. It is not even in the cards. Okay. So don't even think about that unless you're a Kraken. And even still, like you're kind of just wasting your sculptures, but do whatever you want because you're rich. From there, at this point, like if you get to this point, there's probably already infantry, new infantry in the game by the time you're watching this. Okay. But let's say that they're complete trash for whatever reason. You could entertain the idea of a 5515 Tarek. That's what I have it is actually really solid in the open field with CPO prime he hits like an absolute truck he literally just dumpsters people it's raw damage and it is what it is like he's he just puts out a ton of damage but before you do this I'm begging you please do this just just do it I know you want to be a purist for infantry if you made it this far into the video but just do it okay just do it you want at least one of each troop type on the field okay that's the reality they're just too good to not do you are literally just shooting your account in the foot if you don't do it eventually if you've got time then maybe a 5551 Boudica makes it in the mix and you can kind of retire your YSG to just chill with your Richard in perpetuity okay and then you would be rocking rocking these four something like that all right possibly Tarek in the mix depending on how far along you are already uh but really like you should not be running three infantry armies right now because there just are not three good infantry there, there, there are none 
done there's no what else are you gonna do what could you do there's nothing you could even do what are you gonna do like pyrus uh, Mehmed or something or like P pyrus without like no dude there, there's just nothing else there's nothing else I'm looking at all the commanders there isn't anything so there you go that's where we're at here with infantry which is horrendous all right if you get to this point as a free-to-play infantry main or even like this point just start saving just just hoard until for however many months until we see new infantry commanders because that is going to be your best bet okay and lastly we can talk about the progression of your equipment okay as a brand new player in rise of kingdoms this is like this starting point for your uh for your infantry okay you go all in on the windswept set and then you get the gatekeeper shield with the talent and you get the Tur or the Kurox humility with the talent you get 20 percent of March speed here okay and you also get these set bonuses because you're running all four uh windswept pieces so a little bit more attack and March speed you get a really nice chunk of health here from the legs and the shield which is great and a little bit of defense as well so a nice spread here with a heavy focus on the most important stat for infantry which is health eventually you're going to move on to something like this where you replace the windswept set with a talented purple everything uh this will give you more attack than you really care for and you do lose the march speed which is unfortunate but this is kind of just a stepping stone to this okay this is uh the next step in the line here you're going to get rid of all your attack and go all in on the defense and, and then your gucci eventually uh you can replace the gloves and the boots with the set pieces so then you'll have a two set bonus eventually you can replace the boots with the set boots that way you'll have a two piece set bonus and then you'll be you'll be gucci there and you could also put an iconic crystal here for some extra base health points and then if you wanted to you could replace the gloves although unless you get a talent there it doesn't really move the needle so you know at that point you're pretty much chilling uh and you can move on to building other sets but this is um this is a really good build here i think this is really solid for context the two-piece set bonus is three percent extra defense so it would it would make a difference to replace the boots even if they're not talented because you'll get three percent extra defense with that uh, with the health piece right that two-piece set there and then also you put an iconic crystal in here and boom you get three more base health so uh, i think replacing the boots makes sense replacing the gloves uh it's like only if you're gonna move for only if you're gonna go for four pieces like you know this is the iconic crystal here the priority for this to get an iconic crystal is way down the totem pole so it's not really worth it so you don't really have to worry about that too much like i would focus on building multiple of these then i would focus on like getting a legendary gloves and a legendary weapon like it, it that doesn't really make much of a difference uh and you could pretty much just keep the shield and the uh, karak's humility here you're really not missing out on too much with the sakura fubuki or with the eternal knight or anything like that are they technically best in slot late 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 game yeah sure like you know you could get the shield and get the four piece set bonus and all that stuff but I mean by the time you get there you probably don't even need this video anymore you kind of already know what to do right so that's the progression windswept all purple and then replace the uh first the chest and the helmet then the boots and then you're good all right if you made it to the end of this video then hopefully you found it useful hopefully I have convinced you not to be an infantry main as a free to play or new player but if you are hardcore and you are a giga chad and you want to do it hopefully i have given you guys some good solid advice and hopefully you can uh perform really well in rise of kings despite infantry not getting a lot of love lately with that being said if you guys enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kings players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on the current state of infantry and do you want me to make a follow-up video talking about why infantry is actually so bad right now i would love to throw my two cents in and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.